The, our next speaker is very well known in the area too. He's from New York City area, and that's Mark Crispin Miller. Uh, uh, Mark is a professor. Mark is a professor of media studies at New York University. I actually went to graduate school at NYU, and is the author of a book, Fooled Again, How the Right Stole the 2004 Elections. He is known for his writing on American media and for his activism on behalf of democratic media reform. His books include Boxed In, The Culture of TV Seeing Through Movies, and Mad Scientist, A Study of War Propaganda. He graduated from Northwestern University with a BA in 1971, John Hopkins University with an MA in 1973, and a PhD in 1977. Welcome, Mark Crispin Miller. Okay, uh, I did not run my notes past the lawyers committee, so you can't blame them for anything I'm about to say. <clears throat> um, I was asked to talk about intelligence strategies utilized to undermine legitimate, um, what is it? Uh, criticism, right. Is that better? You can hear me now? Yeah, I was asked to talk about intelligence strategies utilized to undermine legitimate criticism. Now, I could talk about that subject for, well, for a whole semester. <laughs> and I'm doing that now at NYU, and I only have 20 or so minutes to try to do it here. So um, I'm just gonna mention two such strategies very quickly and then focus on a third. Um, the first uh, of those intelligence strategies, and this is something that Gary just uh, essentially talked about, is uh, censorship uh, through control of the press. Uh, the American media has long since been uh, kind of taken over by the intelligence establishment, and that's especially true of the New York Times and the Washington Post, but the rest of them as well. I don't recall reading about the AUF study that fires couldn't have brought down Building 7. I don't recall seeing that in the New York Times. Did, am I right about that? And somehow I m missed the New York Times' uh, report of the fire commissioner's statement calling for a new inquiry. Is, is that just, it was in, in the copy that I get, um, unhappily get delivered to my apartment? No, they don't report anything like that. Um, it really is not an exaggeration to say that the press, the US press today, our free press, as I always call it with scare quotes, is really comparable uh, to the uh, press uh, in the Third Reich. It, it really is in terms of its, you laugh, uh, that's a position I'm actually prepared to uh, demonstrate in great detail, but that is essentially the result of the uh, merger of uh, the fourth estate in this country with the uh, intelligence establishment, mainly the CIA, also the DIA, uh, and the CDC, and the FCC, and the FBI, and so on. Uh, the second uh, st such strategy that I'll just mention very quickly is uh, the infiltration of uh, the critical community and the deliberate uh, uh, sowing of division within that community. Um, uh, Commissioner Joya mentioned some uh, uh, notions about 9-11 and its responsibility that are sort of groundless and reckless. Um, it's not really a stretch, it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to assume that some of those um, notions have been deliberately um, propagated, uh, again, by the intelligence community. So, some of you may have heard of Cass Sunstein, who worked under Obama, and I think probably was hired by the Obama administration because of a piece he wrote uh, when he was at Harvard advising uh, the tactic of cognitive infiltration by which he meant deliberately um, derailing the 9-11 truth movement by uh, posting a divisive and hostile and misleading information in their chat rooms and so on. So this is a, you know, uh, 
constitutional scholar who is, you know, recommending a covert means of derailing legitimate criticism in what we like to think of as a democracy. Uh, that's the second one, but the third one, the one I'm going to focus on, and it's one that Gary mentioned uh, passingly, is the weaponization of the phrase conspiracy theory uh, or conspiracy theorist as a way to uh, make people distrust their own critical faculties, as a way to make people feel they have to apologize for perfectly legitimate suspicions about uh, elite intentions. This you know, brief history lesson, and, and incidentally, I, I'm hoping that this, uh, these remarks of mine will help to contextualize what we're focusing on today, 9-11 uh, itself. I want to try to place it within the larger context of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we might call deep state shenanigans uh, really since 1963, since the Kennedy assassination. In 1967, early 1967, as many of you know, the CIA sent all its station chiefs worldwide a memo, memo 1035-960. Uh, what that memo did was advise its station chiefs to help to solve the problem of increasing mass skepticism toward the Warren Commission uh, th uh, theory of a lone gunman killing JFK, uh, to try to counter that skepticism basically by defaming uh, those most prominent critics like Mark Lane and others whose works were uh, increasingly widely read, uh, his, his rush to judgment, uh, Sylvia Mayer's accessories after the fact, other works that were raising perfectly legitimate questions about the Warren report. So what um, the memo basically advised its station chiefs to do was to uh, cultivate their uh, me uh, uh, propaganda assets and friends in the media to discredit the work of these conspiracy theorists uh, wherever possible. And then the memo advised a number of uh, what we would call today talking points in order to uh, uh, d make these people seem either insane or venal or both, okay? So um, th this, it's interesting, prior to this uh, memo's release in 67, the phrase conspiracy theory was used only now and then in the US press and uh, inconsistently in different ways. Starting in 1967, uh, increasingly, over the decades, ever since, up till the present moment, that phrase, those phrases were used more and more and more, uh, and always in the same way, always to laugh off uh, suggestions, speculations, criticisms that pointed in the direction of high crimes by the U.S. government against democracy, okay? I mean, it's a dramatic shift from, from rare uses of those phrases to constant, obsessive, pounding home of those phrases to the point that uh, uh, now Americans basically uh, take a kind of sentimental view of executive authority and of the elites because there's, there's something wrong with you if you doubt the official story. This is kind of a new thing. Let me recommend very strongly uh, Lance DeHaven Smith's great book, Conspiracy Theory in America. I'm proud to say I suggested to him that he write the book. It's published by the University of Texas Press. It's an indispensable book. Now, what, what this propaganda drive has done, and it is arguably, arguably the most successful propaganda drive in American history, because it is not only uh, discredited, you know, disparate, uh, uh, kinds of inquiry, but it has uh, discredited across the board any attempt to raise any questions about any official story. It's had a kind of prophylactic effect so that the mind cannot be inseminated by heretical thoughts, you know? And it's a, it's a prophylactic that you can only remove with great difficulty and with a lot of pain 
Do you know what I'm saying? I know this because I teach. So, you know, students are in visible agony as, as they, oh, geez, that, really? All right, so what, what the conspiracy theory charge has done is specifically is to trump, so to speak, trump science. Okay, the mind that has been calcified by the conspiracy theory meme uh, is, is completely impenetrable by any inconvenient information. That kind of thing just bounces right off your brain. And I have to say that this is actually a worse problem, a more serious problem, and a more dangerous problem among liberals and progressives than it is out on the right, okay? You know, we, we love to hear, wait, I, I gotta finish, okay? I appreciate the applause, but hold it. I've, I've got so many things to say. You know, we all love to snicker at Republican superstitiousness and the view that America was founded as a Christian nation or that the universe is 6,000 years old. We chortle about this. We think, oh, those right-wingers, they're so stupid. They don't believe in science. Well, actually, it's, 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 it's most liberals uh, who are actually uh, far more subject to ludic ludicrously unscientific notions and much more dangerous notions than uh, people on the right. Okay, and this goes back to the Kennedy assassination. Okay, this is where much begins. Okay, uh, what we're dealing with today and trying to tell some truth about 9-11 points back to 1963, the propagation of this preposterous notion that Lee Harvey Oswald himself killed JFK, something, something that two thirds of the American people no longer believe. The New York Times believes it as religiously as ever, right? I mean, I don't know what kind of blood oaths they have to take to join that workforce, uh, but it's the same with the, well, actually not the Washington Post, but the Times in particular is stuck in, in, in the 60s, still flogging the Warren Report, and of the many absolutely preposterous notions on which that narrative depends, the most ridiculous is the magic bullet theory, right? You've all heard this. The same bullet, you know, went through Kennedy and changed course and turned around and went through various parts of John Connolly's body and then ended up on a stretcher in pristine condition. Yeah, that's right. Very scientific. That's not junk science, right? That's right, not junk science. So uh, John Kennedy was shot in the front from the back, right? And then Bobby Kennedy was shot in the back from the front, right? Sirhan Sirhan, you may have heard, was stabbed in the neck, right, in, his, in the prison where they're keeping him. The New York Times reported this, repeated the same bullshit about how it was Sirhan who shot Kennedy. The coroner of LA County, Thomas Noguchi, ruled that the shot, the fatal shot in Bobby Kennedy's case came from the rear, going upward a couple of inches from the back of his head. Sirhan was about six feet in front of Bobby firing wildly in all directions, okay? And we're supposed to believe that he was the one who killed RFK? That's also an example of junk science, right? As is the NIST report on the collapse of Building 7. On its face, laughable, ridiculous. What if it had been Putin who put out that, that argument, right? Would anybody have any trouble saying, oh, that's absurd, no. But it happens here, see? Under the spell of the conspiracy theory meme, we feel we have to apologize if we suspect that the official, or admit that the official story is completely ridiculous. Now I can rush through a number of other examples. Uh, there's Russiagate, okay? That is actually a conspiracy theory in the sense uh, of the memo. I mean, it's a completely ridiculous theory with no scientific basis and which has been authoritatively debunked by the VIPS study, V-I-P-S study that Bill Binney was part of, which demonstrated that the DNC emails vanished too quickly from that database to have been a hack. It was a download and it was probably Seth Rich who downloaded it. I mean, that's a name we're not supposed to mention because that's conspiracy theory, right? 
we could then move from Russiagate to the problem of election theft, which has been demonstrably carried out time and time again in this country, primarily through electronic means by Republican operatives. Russia has nothing to do with it, right? But this is called, again, conspiracy theory. It can't possibly be true. Gary mentioned vaccines, okay? Here again, it is, it is liberals, it is the liberal state of California that has just passed SB 276, the most draconian law against uh, vaccine exemptions in the whole country, right? There is no scientific evidence to support the massive attacks on infant bodies with, with, with dozens of vaccines, right? Uh, what, should I keep going? All right. Um, well, Epstein, they've, they've, they've kind of they've kind of jumped the shark with Epstein, if you know what I mean, right? It's a little, it's a bridge too far. Although I have to say um, that while the evidence is sort of um, compelling that he did not kill himself, but was murdered, we also have to entertain the possibility that he wasn't killed at all and that he got away. Okay. All right. I said it. I didn't run it past the lawyers committee. And for that, I apologize. Uh, there's, okay. I, I feel like I'm being asked to play certain hits, you know. <laughs> Uh, the cell phone radiation, which the New York Times has laughed off. It's not a problem at all. Uh, there's 5G, which Gary mentioned, which is which terrifyingly dangerous, uh, for which there is not a, you know, abundant scientific evidence against its use. And the New York Times has outrageously promoted it as perfectly safe, I reckon in part because its largest single shareholder, Carlos Slim of Mexico, made his billions on the cell phone trade south of the border. It's also a fact that the New York Times has a business deal with Verizon to set up a 5G lab, okay? Uh, that couldn't have anything to do with this unconscionable promotion of an extremely dangerous technology, which is really basically gonna enable the government to seize all of our data more quickly, you know, using our microwaves and all the other stuff that's uh, part of the Internet of Things. There's also, uh, I mean, there's also transgenderism. I don't mean transgender persons. Uh, I have colleagues, friends who are transgender. I'm talking about the ideology, the movement, the notion that you can become a woman if you just say you're one, you know, which is uh, a, an essentially misogynistic move that is posing a grave threat to women's and girls' athletics, which is uh, a tremendous, highly profitable boon to big pharma and the medical industrial complex. We're talking about um, uh, dire medical intervention in the lives and minds of very young children. It is a grotesque uh, delusion to uh, claim that the transgenderist ideology has any scientific basis at all. Here again, it's promoted mainly uh, by, by liberals and opposed by the right and as uh, radical feminists as well. Okay, I only have a couple minutes left. Now, um, what I wanna note here is that what I'm describing is actually getting exponentially worse as we sit here more dangerous. Uh, the FBI recently came out with the statement that conspiracy theories comprise a new domestic terrorism threat. I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, and they talk about those whose thinking is, quote, you'll love this, at odds with official or prevailing explanations of events. Okay? This makes everyone in this room a, a domestic terrorism threat. Uh, DARPA, the Defense um, Advanced uh, Research Projects Agency, helped invent the internet, is now working on a means of ensuring that we know, thanks to them, thanks to the Pentagon, 
that we know what's true and what isn't. Okay, we're talking about the militarization of, of, of thinking, of consciousness. This is something that George Orwell could not have imagined in his wildest dreams. It is a kind of surveillance uh, 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 of, of unimaginable scale and sophistication and exquisiteness working through our cell phones and our computers. Uh, and we are talking, therefore, about um, a move whose lethal impact is incalculable. Now, the delusions of the right, that the universe is 6,000 years old, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is nowhere near as dangerous. Uh, it does not have anywhere near, could not have anywhere near the genocidal impact uh, that has been, um, uh, that we can basically attribute to the lies that have been pushed by the state over the last half century or so, endless wars promoted and enabled by these lies. 9-11 and the war on terror is only the latest chapter uh, uh, in this long history. Uh, the movement has had its martyrs, you know, Barry Jennings, Philip Marshall, and there have been countless people who've been fired because of their adherence to the truth. Uh, as frightening as our opposition is, we are obliged to continue to stick to the truth to speak the truth, no matter what they try to bring against us, because ultimately, inevitably, the truth will triumph. Thank you. <laughs>